and today what I'm doing is beginning an upgrade to my solar battery backup system. I set this system up a little over three years ago. I used uh, lead acid batteries as the battery uh, uh, pack for them simply because they were so much cheaper than lithium iron phosphate batteries at the time. However, since then, lithium iron phosphate batteries have come way down in price. So what I'm doing right now is adding some lithium iron phosphate batteries to the system. I still have a 10 kilowatt hour lead acid battery bank that's in reasonably good condition after three years. It has not been discharged that many times. It's basically been held at float about 99% of the time. So there's plenty of oomph left in those batteries and I don't want to get rid of them. So what I'm going to do is put in a separate lithium iron phosphate battery bank that uh, I can use one or the other of and they will not ever be interconnected. And they will also be charged separately and I'll get to that in a little bit. Anyway, today I'm sort of at the first wiring stage. What I have done so far is about two weeks ago the batteries arrived and I hooked them up individually to my solar system, which is a one kilowatt solar array on my roof that comes down to a Victron charge controller. And uh, I charge the batteries up all the way up to float uh, using Victron's lithium iron phosphate setting and uh, basically brought the batteries up to full charge. So what I'm going to do now that the batteries are fully charged and have been sitting for four or five days is I'm going to parallel them and let them sit for another day or two. So let's take a look at the batteries. Here are the batteries that I bought. Sorry that the labeling is upside down, but that's the way they are sitting there and they're kind of a pain to move. These are Lithium Time brand 24 volt 200 amp hour batteries. They weigh about 85 pounds each, which is why I'm not going to just flip them around for this video. So each of these batteries has a little over 5 kilowatt hours of capacity. So together these two batteries make up a little over 10 kilowatt hours of capacity. So what I'm going to do today is just parallel these batteries. and I've got the cables made and crimped and I'm using number two gauge wire with 105 degree Celsius insulation on it which has an ampacity of about 220 amps. Now the BMSs in these batteries uh, are limited to 200 amps continuous and a bit higher than that for a very short term. So those wires will be more than adequate for paralleling these batteries. Now they are at slightly different voltages. The one that's further uh, away from the camera is about 15 hundredths of a volt higher voltage than the closer one. So there will be some current flow between the two, but I expect that current flow not to be very large because they're both sitting at essentially full charge. So I'm going to connect up the wires for parallel and then we're just going to wait until Monday when I will finish wiring these up and putting them in the system. So I'll do that, then I'll come back and talk about how I'm going to run two different chemistry battery banks in my solar backup system. Well, as you can see, I've got the batteries uh, parallel. There were no sparks, no smoke, nothing fancy going on. And they're now sitting at the midpoint voltage uh, between where the two batteries were before I paralleled them. And the cables, which are two gauge, and so they have pretty high ampacity, given the quality of wire I'm using, uh, are not even warm, so very little current was passed. Now, how am I going to use this with a lead acid battery bank? The box they're sitting on has 10 kilowatt hours of lead acid batteries. It's a 24 volt bank, 
at um, 420 amp hours. And this is a 24 volt bank at 400 amp hours. Well, because these batteries have rather different charging and discharging characteristics, I am not going to tie them together. What I'm going to do is wire them to a pair of switches. One of the switches is there. The other one is over here. And I'm going to switch both the positive and negative wires. The negative wire from the battery bank here is going to go to this little gizmo right here, which is a Victron Smart Shunt. And... Uh, to monitor the capacity of this battery bank and see how much it's drawn down. So the negative wire from here is going to go to the smart shunt and then to my negative switch and then from there to the inverter which is a Schneider Connex SW4024. Positive wire will go uh, through a fuse to the switch which is a uh, I'll talk about switching a little bit. You can see it over there and then to the inverter. Now the switches I'm using and I'm switching both positive and negative are these uh, Blue C battery switches that are rated at 350 amps and basically they are a 1, 2 or both switch but we just won't ever set it to both. So if I want to use the lead acid batteries I'll set it to 1. If I want to use the lithium batteries I'll set it to two. And that way I have two separate shunts. There's one there and there's one there. That one monitors back in behind the wires there. Monitors the lead acid battery bank. This shunt will monitor the lithium battery bank. And depending on which way I have the switches set, I'll either be drawing power from lithium or from lead acid. Now in the short term, I'm going to be charging the lithium battery bank with my solar array via this Victron Smart Solar 15035 charge controller. And uh, I'll be charging the lead acid battery bank, at least in the short term, via the inverter's internal 90 amp charger which will charge up the lead acid battery bank very quickly. And it's a very good charger. The reason uh, I'm going to, and ultimately when I get rid of the lead acid battery bank, uh, I'll reconfigure the charger in there to charge the lithium iron phosphate batteries so that I can charge them either from solar or from the uh, uh, inverter. Although, I basically never use the inverter as a charger. The only time it's ever used as a charger is when I set the system up because we anticipate a power supply in which I turn on the inverter and turn on the AC pass-through so that if the power goes off, the inverter kicks in very quickly. I think it's uh, 15 milliseconds and seamlessly powers the circuits I have wired to my transfer switch here and whenever you turn the inverter on with AC connect and then turn the AC power on to pass through it it turns the battery charger on and charges the battery bank lead acid battery bank in this case uh, for a couple of minutes and it never really puts much into it because of that so anyway that's what the plan is as I said, I'm using these lithium time batteries. These are not the cheapest lithium iron phosphate uh, 24 volt 200 amp hour batteries, but they're not the most expensive either. I bought them because I have an ampere time lithium iron phosphate battery, and this company used to be ampere time earlier this year, last year. They changed their name, but they're the same products. And I've been quite happy with the Ampere Time battery that I have. So, this, once this is sat for a day or two and the two batteries have equalized completely, will be wired via the switches to the system so that, as I said, I can use either system uh, at my leisure. So there we go. A 10 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery bank 
in the form of two batteries. And a little later this year, my intention is to add one more battery to this battery bank to bring it up to 15 kilowatt hours. And the reason I'm only getting, it can, I could go with as many as four and not void the warranty on the batteries, but I'm only going to go with three because I only have room for three on top of this battery box where the lead acid batteries are located. So uh, just a simple space consideration. So anyway, there we go. 10 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries paralleled and uh, right now equilibrating by passing a little current back and forth between the two of them. See how the wires feel? Yeah, the wires are at room temperature. There has been no change in their temperature. So as I expected, even though the voltages were slightly different since the batteries were fully charged, a very little current passed between them. And right now they're sitting at 26.82 volts, which is the equivalent of a 13.4 volts for a 12 volt battery bank. So there we have it, ready to uh, do the rest of the wiring. I did not buy the rest of the wire today because the wiring from the batteries to the inverter is all going to be 2 aught gauge and that wire costs about 13 to 14 dollars a foot so I want to get all my switches mounted and get my uh, shunts mounted where they're going to be so I don't have to buy any extra wire I can measure out how much I need and just buy that amount so there we go, lithium time batteries. I should say, when I bought these batteries, I think they're still the same price. They're $1,550 each delivered. And so that's a uh, 10 kilowatt hour battery bank for $3,000. And so far I have about another $200 in wiring and switches and the shunt. And that included making additional wires to come from the solar charge controller down to these batteries. So uh, pretty straightforward setup. I'm not anticipating any difficulty uh, with these batteries. And once I get them hooked up, I'll do a short video demonstrating the operation of my hybrid lead acid lithium iron phosphate battery system. So. Between the two battery banks, I have 20 kilowatt hours of capacity, although only about 15 to 16 kilowatt hours is usable. Now, uh, in the winter, uh, our house draws an average of a little over six kilowatt hours per day. So we would have to have about a two and a half day power outage to flat both banks of batteries. And the plan would be to hook up, to attach the lead acid batteries first and run them down till they're at about 40% of capacity and then switch over to lithium. Now the lithium batteries, as I said, will be hooked up to my solar charge controller. So they will be held at float voltage and uh, will be fully charged when the switchover is made and uh, the charge controller and the solar array will continue to charge them. Right now in February, my one kilowatt uh, charge array uh, can put out about 1.6 to 1.7 kilowatt hours per day of full sunlight. That is a consequence of the fact that I'm in Maine and the fact that the solar array because of the orientation of my roof is facing west. So I don't get any solar in the morning. In the summer though, I get about, oh, five to six kilowatt hours of solar per day, per full sun day, which can recharge one of these batteries in one day. Okay, that wraps up this little video. Hope you found it interesting. If you did, please click the uh, like button 
and I hope to see you again when I update this system and get these uh, batteries fully connected.